this afternoon. That's a bit harsh, it's been really nice to you. One, Daniel Blackburn. Hey! Three, Francisco Ciralta. Hey! Four, the captain, Wesley Hood. Hey. Five, Ryan Porches. Hey! Six, Jamal Lewis. Hey! Eighteen, Yasser Espria. Hey! Twenty, and uh, nineteen, Mac and Milo. Hey! Twenty-four, Tom Davis-Shiru. Hey! Twenty-five, Emmanuel Dennis. Hey! Thirty-nine, Edo Kayembe. Hey! And forty-five, Ryan Anderson. Hey. Subs for the Hornets, 26 Ben Hamer, 7 Tom Eats, 8 Jake Nimmermore, 9 Miletta Rajovic, 11 Ismail Kone, 15 Matty Pollock, 16 Georgie Chak Patanta, 37 Mateus Martins and 42 James Morris. This afternoon's referee is Mr James Bell. <laughs>
Go on, Ryan. away with it. Again, we can't beat the first man. Come on, Georgie. Yeah! And once again, another disappointing quarter. <laughs> Quality for once, please. How about no? And it's finished at Vicarage Road, Watford nil. Preston North End, nil. BBC Live Sport just said the championship never fails to excite at this stage of the season. Well, I can tell you that wasn't the case in the game today at Vicarage Road because it was a nil-nil drab game. Preston, they're the kings of it. It's just what they do. And Watford, well, we're also the kings of it most of the time, especially in games at home because I haven't seen a Watford win at home in the league since October. October is mad, it's bonkers, it's crazy, and I'm sick of it. 22nd, you know, uh, or 21st of October was the last time I saw a win. I mean, yeah, all right, we beat Norwich at the end of November, but it's just too long, it's too long. And I'll tell you why, because these players, they're just a bit like rabbits in headlights. They just don't know what they're doing, and there's talent in the players themselves, but do they know how to work as a team? No, not really. Do they tr give effort? Absolutely, but it's just a lack of quality, and all game today it was just a lot of misplaced passes, kind of disjointed play, and there was just nothing getting going. It just The game never really got going and got started, and it just felt like the game drifted away and passed us by. Um, you know, Preston was always going to be a bit of a tricky opponent because we know that they're, you know, a tough team to break down. They're doing quite well this season, obviously before the game, sat in eighth and only a few points off the playoff places. So we have at least, you know, stopped a potential playoff team 
from getting closer to those top six. But, you know, they weren't exactly impressive, Preston, today. Um, you know, didn't offer a lot. And from an offensive point of view, Blackman had very, very little to do. But the funny thing is that they had good chances. It was just a lot of them they put wide and really let Watford defences off the hook. And, and, and it was just the amount of chances they had where they just... You think, all right, that's got to be a goal. They've, they've, they've put up all the build-up from set pieces. They've crafted the chance. And then they've managed to put it wide from close range, a header or a chance for early on in the game, um, in, the, in the first half for Preston, where really you think, how, have it, how has he not put it in the back of the net um, from Hughes? So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an OK part point. It's a clean sheet for the Hornets. Still unbeaten under Cleverly, but... It's really not saying much because it was just a bit, bit of a nothing performance. Um, the game starts off. I, th- I have to say, I think, you know, starting the game, um, it's great to see that the Preston fans uh, with their Gentry Day were celebrating with their, uh, you know, their, their caps. Um, it was, yeah, b- bowler hats. It was, uh, it was good to see, but um, that was about as interesting as it got uh, for a lot of the, the Preston fans. <laughs> no, but they had some chances. It's just like, it felt like Watford made a decent start. They were quite lively at the beginning, but then it went through a bit of a lull in the first half where, you know, the game started going flat. Nothing really was happening. Um, and then Watford kind of didn't really create a lot, but they just had a lot of the ball. And you kind of felt, all right, eventually, hopefully Watford can break down this stubborn Preston side but unfortunately from an offensive point of view Watford were just far too predictable all game and you know fair play to Preston because from a defensive point of view they they defended well you know they were very organized they were very well drilled but they also didn't seem to have much of a clue of what to do going forward and you know when it came to putting together attacks and and you know working opportunities they just didn't quite have the um attacking ideas and so therefore the game is a real stalemate it just kind of didn't really go anywhere um and you know there's a few chances especially in the first half one backman did make i think one save uh what there was a shot it looked like it was kind of fairly out of the goal but it might have been on target um it went down as a shot on target um i think from emil reese and then backman just kind of came and 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 smothered the ball smothered the chance uh but outside of that nothing from Preston on target we had one where Tom Daly Bashir had a shot I think it was saved in the center of the goal you know not an exactly uh, amazing shot um and then there was also one where I think it was actually yeah I remember it now Daly Bashir just kind of that was the one where he just hit it and it just rolled across the floor after a bit of good build-up but then after that, Sierra Rouse had a header, which again, wasn't spectacular, but it was on target. But outside of that, no shots on target from either side. That just is a you know real demonstration of the lack of quality from both teams today. Um, but Batman, to be fair to him, you know, made a, a a few okay, you know, moments in the game where, you know, you're a bit worried, and I think he made that save in the first half, but his kind of passing out is not usually great, but it was okay today. Um, the centre-backs were solid enough. Um, but as I said, Preston had a few chances where, you know, at least they dealt with everything they were given, our Watford defence today. But a few times, get let off the hook. You know, really good chances for Preston. Headers, um, there was a one header in the first half that went just past the post. Um, and then there was also the big chance that I mentioned for Hughes, where he just, I don't know how he managed to, to put it wide from, from close range. Um, he just kind of smashed it and it went past the post. And then also in the second half, they had a header that went wide um, from a decent, decent position. Um, but yeah, it was one of those really for, for Watford, where I think, you know, the, the better chances really for, were for Preston, but then Watford had more of the ball didn't do a lot with it unfortunately um, and it was a lot of groans and frustrations there were a few chances where you know it was blazed over from Watford you know Jamal Lewis had one in the first half um, where the ball kind of ricochets to him it, you know bounces towards him after a few attempts and then you're thinking all right you're not you're in the box just keep it down and he absolutely blazes it over the bar and then Lewis had another chance in the second half 
Again, uh, a decent opportunity, but this time he decides, rather than taking it first time, you know, he, he could have run onto it a bit quicker and takes it first time and just, you know, catches the keeper out. But instead, he wants to maybe, he's got that first shot he misses playing on his mind. He wants to make sure he gets it right. So he takes a touch, then it means that there's time for the defenders to get back in it a little bit and close the angle and the keeper can close the angle. But then he hits it and he blazes it um, just over the bar, you know, close effort, but, you know, he should be getting it on target at least when he takes a touch to control it. There was also a chance for Wesley Hoop, I think, as well, that he just hit, you know, from a long range, but it was unfortunately just past the post. So, yeah, a few kind of speculative efforts, really. Nothing um, that much of note. Um, and Preston, that hasn't helped them in their playoff um, kind of... Uh, quest because now they've slipped down from 8th to 10th um, and they're sat on 60 points I believe uh, and you know there's still a few teams you know in that that race you got Coventry in 67 so this is a few points away from from the teams that they they want to get to um, and I think as well that Watford you know we knew that nothing's riding on this season but it would be nice to just get a few more points. I think uh, we're on 51 now, so maybe a, a couple wins um, here or there. Maybe three wins and we're safe. But the way we're going, you know, we, we, a win would be nice. Um, we're just stumbling over the line. And even if we don't get those nine points, you know, at the end of the day, there's enough teams down there that it doesn't really matter that they're they're going to be they're going to be closer to relegation than we will. Obviously, Rotherham have already gone. Then you've got Sheffield Wednesday, 39 points. Obviously, they they had a game against QPR today. I'm not sure what the result was. They won that, so up to 42. But, you know, you've got teams around there. Although 51 doesn't look great, and you might say, oh, Watford aren't out of it yet, there's enough bad teams that we, we'll be out of the woods and it'll be all right. So, yeah, it's not exactly the most ideal game for, for Cleverly's chances, but... At the end of the day, of him getting, you know, maybe the chance of the job. But the, the thing is, we played two games against Leeds and against West Brom that were really impressive performances. Just frustrating, we didn't hold on to the win. This one was the kind of opposite, where again another team that's, you know, quite high up the table, but a completely, definitely the worst um, performance we've had under Cleverly so far. So, yeah, um, if we have a few more of those, then. Maybe not um, that Pozzo will think about a new manager, but it'd just be nice to have a bit of consistency. I think Cleverly would be a good choice because, you know, he's going to get backed by the players, probably, uh, hopefully, definitely by the fans. But on the basis of that performance, you know, we want to see a bit more improvement in the remaining games. You know, we've got Sunderland and Hull still to play at home, Middlesbrough away, Ipswich and Southampton away. Those are some tough, tough games. So just some sort of encouragement even if the results don't come something to you know hold on to for next season would be nice man of the match today Daniel Backman was okay I thought but I think Tom Deli Bashiru takes it because he just drives in that midfield role you know really really purposeful at times in the midfield and just gives us some sort of forward you know momentum a bit of um, front foot play and he's the, one of the few players that Seems to want to take the ball by the scruff of the neck, you know, take the game by the scruff of the neck and just bring us forward. Uh, you know, Chuck Fadadzi, when he came on, did make a positive influence, I thought. You know, again, the final ball, Ryovic, you know, there was a few times where his link-up play was a bit better today, but you just got to get the ball into the box. And Lewis, I thought, had a few good deliveries, but then when it came to his, you know, final shots that he had, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't great. So, yeah, not too bad. A few dodgy you know details but still the overall gist of it could be a lot worse so we go into the midweek game i think it's ipswich on wednesday so tough tough game you know they're you know right at the top challenging for the title possibly automatic promotion but obviously you saw leicester good day for them today um with the results obviously the ipswich lost to norwich and you saw obviously as well you know uh, leeds lost to coventry so you know, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be tight at the top, but yeah, I don't fancy us, to be honest, against Ipswich, but you never know. Strange things have happened. Watford end, uh, end up turning up in the games you don't expect and then not winning against the teams you should. Um, so we'll have to see. But come on, you horns, and we'll see you next season. Bye-bye.